Hey guys, this is Vortek from Jolly Monster Studio, and today we're going to- wait, 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 what is all this? What's- what, what's happening? What- oh, there we go. Today we're going to resume our player character series, picking up where we last left off, um, by introducing a new attack type in the form of a kick. So we're going to use all of the knowledge we learned in the player character series, as well as the C++ Fundamental series, and we're going to add this new attack. We're going to hook it up to our right mouse button and, and execute it in the game. In addition to adding this new attack, we're going to have to look at animation blending. Because kicks are a full body motion, it's not going to play nicely with the way we split up our punches from our lower half when we're running around. And then lastly, we're going to start looking at cleaning up our code a little bit, organizing it in ways that are meaningful and, and valuable, and prepping for our next set of tutorials. Okay, so let's get started. All right, guys, so let's hop into this review lesson. And uh, first thing I want to show you is under Tutorial Resources, <clears throat> I've organized our animation folder um, to include a attack subfolder and then kick and punch animations. Now, you'll notice the kick animations don't have any montage associated with them. And as part of this review, we're going to burn through all of those steps We'll add in the animation notifies, we'll add in the sounds, and all that good stuff. Um, and I'll show you how, once you kind of learn those techniques, you can burn through this stuff super, super fast. So, let's get into it. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new kick montage. And if you want to see more details around that, check out the previous videos, and I'll have all that linked below. Um, but to do so, we're just going to right-click, go to Animations, Animation Montage. We're going to pick our skeleton. And we're going to call this the kick attack montage. Now with our montage open, now we're just going to pop it over here. We're going to take all of our <clears throat> kick assets. So you can just filter them by um, using the filter um, pane on your asset browser. And we're going to take our fast kick. Or actually, you know what? We're going to start off with the slow left kick. And we're just going to drop that in. And we're just going to drop that in. There we go. And then we're going to take our um, fast right kick. And we're going to drop that one in. And then we're going to look for our roundhouse, which I should have labeled with the kick moniker. But I'll correct this in the final version. No worries there. Okay, so we have our montage with our three animations. Very similar to our punch. So there's our, our slow kick kind of the starting hit. Then we have a fast right. So a little bit more kineticism. And then, wow, he does a little uh, roundhouse, a little uh, backspin kick. Okay, cool. So we have our animation montage. We have our three animations. Now what? And if you ever get stuck, go back to the animation folder, go down to punch, pop open the melee fist attack montage, and use it for reference. So what are we doing here? Well, we're adding sections, and we're setting the slot to upper body, and we'll talk about that later. Um, and then we're adding all these various notifies. So we have our um, noise notifies, and then our collision notifies down here. Cool. So let's reproduce that in our kick montage. So I'm just going to go back to our kick montage section, and I'm just going to start creating all this stuff. So there's our montage section. It's going to be start one. And I'm just going to drag this over here and get rid of the default one. Cool. And there's, oops, and underscore one. So this is roughly where attack is going to end. And I'm just going to pause this so he stops kicking. There we go. And it's going to be start two. We're going to pop that over here. And I'm not quite sure why it's letting me. There we go. And and two. Start three. And three. Clear all of those so they're separated out nicely. And then let's just adjust them, make sure they're in the right positions. Oops. I'm just gonna move this end one over a little bit. There's a start, and there's the end. Now let's just zoom out rather. And 
Okay, there's our end. Start, start, and end. Okay, cool. Now we need to add our notifies. So we want to know when to turn our collision boxes on our kicks. Now you'll notice because we're kicking, we're going to have to talk about sockets. So we have our hand sockets already set up. Our punches are attached to our fists. Um, or sorry, our punch collision boxes are attached to our fists, but we don't have anything for the legs. So let's throw in the notifies anyway, and then we'll worry about adding the sockets in just a second. So to do that, go down to the notify section, right click, add notify state, and then we have this punch throw anim notify state. And we also have the attack start notify state. So this is the one that makes a little whooshing sound when we punch, and this is the one that actually handles the colliders. So let's figure out where in our animation we want this to occur. So maybe around here, we'll turn it on. And then around here, we'll turn it off. So he goes, bam, there's a collider hits and it should turn off. Yeah, that's good. Next animation. So where is that? So there's our kick and maybe around here, we'll say add notify state attack and we'll stretch it over. Yeah, around here, he kind of loses momentum. That's not going to cause too much damage. Okay, and then the last one, we turn it on. Uh, I think right here is pretty good. And then drag that over to maybe around here. All right, so there's our um, collision start and end sections. And then we're going to also include the thing for the noises. So we want the, and we'll rename this later. Well, right now we'll just reuse the punch throw um, and a notify state. And this is the one that's gonna make the little whooshing sound. So if we throw a kick and we miss, we kind of probably wanna start whooshing around here, I think. And then this one, And yes, I am making sound effects because it helps me visualize where these things are going to go. And you should do it too. So I think we can probably... Well, let's wish around here. Add notify state. And oops, that's the wrong one. Okay. And then lastly, if we throw a kick. So maybe around here. Okay, so let's compare this guy to our punch montage. And it looks pretty good. Now this one has uh, the extra notify because I forgot to remove it. I will clean that up later, so don't worry about that too much. Okay, so we have our, um, our kick montage. It has all of these, um, all of these sections. It's got all this stuff set. Okay, so we're good there. Step one, done. Now let's move on to Visual Studio. So Visual Studio, what do we have in here? Well, let's look at our player character real quick. <clears throat> we are using this thing called the player attack montage and that is our blueprint that has a montage and atom section count and description. And we're leveraging this guy to help us actually play back these attacks. Um, so we'll have to do something with this in a second. And then what else do we have here? We've got our collision profiles, and that's pretty good. Enabled, disabled. Um, we've got our log levels. Ignore that. Oh, here we go. Attack type. So we set this up in the very first lesson. And there's a strategy to all this madness. Because now we're going to create a new enum for kick. And we're just going to actually copy all of this. For sake of expediency, and it's going to be kick. Cool. So now we have a distinction between our attacks. We have two separate animations. We're slowly getting there. Next, 
Um, what else do we have in here that we need to start tidying up? Well, we have a left and a right fist collision box. Now, I don't want to create multiple collision boxes for all of my attacks, especially ones that are sort of bipedal in nature. So I've got two arms, I've got two legs, I can reuse those colliders. So let's do that. Let's rename these properties to be left collision box, or even better, left melee collision box, and then right melee collision box. And this is going to freak out in our CPP file, so we'll go ahead and update that in just a second. But let's just keep going down the list. What else do we have? Uh, well, we have this attack input. And if you guys remember, attack input is what our left mouse button um, triggers the attack with. So we need to come up with another input mechanic um, that's going to let us to trigger the kicks. So attack input is going to get modified to take in an attack type and then we'll externalize the actual input calls to separate functions. And let's just do that now before we forget. There we go. So we're going to say um, punch attack, and we're going to say kick attack. And because we know this guy is currently being used as our um, primary input function, and just to see that, take a look at the CPP file, and right under the binding, we're saying attack on pressed attack input. So we want to change this up in just a second. Because attack input is now going to take in an E attack type, and it's going to be called an attack type. And then attack start and attack end can stay because they are tied to our notif notifies. So if we open up our notify um, class, every time we start the attack and end, that's already implemented. So that's okay. Um, on attack hit, that can stay. And then all of this other stuff can more or less stay. But let's also start crafting um, paths for additional properties. And one of the ones we need to worry about is attack type. So we want to capture the attack type somewhere. So I'm going to make it a private. <clears throat> and I'm going to say e attack type current attack. And this way I know whenever I'm hitting, what is my currently available attack to me? Or which thing am I working on so I can make determinations in my code later and, and do stuff based off of that attack type. Okay, so this is starting to get um, a little bit hectic, so let's just go back and kind of clean up these things. So we change the um, collision boxes, our CPP file will now need to also reflect these changes. So let's just go back here and everywhere we say, well there we go, left fist collision box, we're going to replace that. We're going to just to edit, um, find and replace and quick replace or control H and we're going to say replace this guy with that guy and just replace all of them done now let's do the exact same thing to our right fist collision box and we're just going to say right cool compilation errors be damned and what's going to happen too when we recompile this um, these collision boxes are going to get reinstantiated in our blueprint, so we're going to have to resize them down, and, and you'll see all that in just a second. So we did that. Um, we also did the modification to our attack input method, and we added these two new functions, which are currently not, they're not doing anything. So let's go back to attack input, which is down here, and it's freaking out because it's missing a signature. So let's say e attack type attack type. Cool. So now we're passing in for every attack input um, what type of attack it actually is. And then looking at this method here you'll notice we're also calling the data table. And the data table is actually where our montage lives. So we're gonna have to make some logic choices around this area too. But we'll get there in just a second. So let's flip back um, to our input bindings and just take a look at those. So 
our input bindings are freaking out because attack input is now expecting a parameter and every time you define an, um, uh, a bind action it doesn't want any parameters as input it just wants a void method um, bind access um, does allow you to pass in parameters because you're taking in the rotational um, values of your mouse or your controller or you know any sort of joystick um, where you need that precision um, float that represents its orientation so you can make you know obvious camera adjustments based on that but actions are just single they're voids um, we can't have anything here so let's change this guy to be punch attack and we don't actually need to worry about on release anymore that was just for um, from our previous example and let's call this attack it's not going to be attack anymore it's going to be punch and then we're going to create a kick and this is going to be our kick attack so far so good so let's flip back to unreal and actually create these input bindings and to do that you go to settings project settings go down to input and under action mapping we have our attack so this is going to become our punch and this is bound to our left mouse button so let's be you know consistent scientists and let's make this a kick and this is going to be the right mouse button and we'll be adding all kinds of different um, actions for our character to perform so don't don't worry too much we'll we'll start remapping this later on cool so we have bindings to our code and we've refactored a couple things along the way let's recompile and see where this gets us all right guys so apparently this takes us nowhere because i forgot to actually implement the two methods we added <laughs> to our player character header signature um, and I just kind of glanced over them should have been uh, going a little bit slower so punch attack and kick attack are not implemented <clears throat> and therefore the compiler is having a, a field day with it so let's go down to our attack input and just add in these two new methods in order to satisfy our compiler overlords so punch attack is just going to be a void and Kick attack is also going to be a void. So these are just empty methods for, for right now. And we have one little spelling mistake here. No other errors as far as I can tell. Oh, we got one here. That's just for the generated body. All right, let's try this again. All right, guys, so we're good. Um, let's take a look at <clears throat> our player character, just to make sure he still runs oh there we go there's our giant collision boxes and our punching no longer works because we haven't actually done anything with that punch attack method but there's our collision boxes and things are still kind of generally okay even though everything has gone horribly wrong but that's okay we're gonna fix it all so let's go back to our code and now start fleshing in the logic for alternating between the punch and the kick um, so let's go back to our CPP file <clears throat> and we're going to go down to the punch attack um, method and inside of this we're going to say attack input and now we can pick what attack type we're going to execute so we're going to say fist pretty easy and we're going to do the exact same thing with attack input for kick again pretty cool so this will take us into the attack input method but we don't really have any logic around attack type so let's start stubbing stuff in so what do we have here well what's what else is going on here so we're taking in our player attack data table and from that we're finding a row called punch one so obviously we don't want to look for punch one we want to look for punch or kick depending on what we have available to us so let's start um, putting a little bit of logic around this so we're gonna do that by and I'm just scrolling through my notes here because I want to make sure we stay on track uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. there we go so what we're gonna do is we're going to take um, 
this guy here, and we're going to look at leveraging a switch to flip between these enums. And switches are kind of neat in the sense that they're conditionals, just like an if, <clears throat> but they provide sort of very um, easy to traverse paths based on enumerations primarily or strings or sort of very com not complex sorry very simple data types whereas conditionals end up taking in you know if greater than x and you know sky is blue and sun is you know turning into blood moon then release the hounds kind of a thing whereas in this case it's just going to be on our attack type and if you create this switch stub you pop in the variable and you kind of hit down your keyboard um, you'll get IntelliSense auto completing this for you. <clears throat> Three things to notice though. We got our fist, we got our kick, and we got this little guy here called default. And default will run when these two are not available in some way. <clears throat> so make sure you always put in your default conditions um, in here. Don't just leave it blank because bad things may happen. In addition to that, ensure you always have a break. Because breaks, if they're not explicitly defined per each case step, are just going to cause the logic to flow down to, to the next one. So if you, it's melee, but there's no break, if it looks like this, oops, if it looks like that, then that means the logic in here is applicable to both fist and kick. So just something to keep in mind. Um, we'll go over conditionals and loops and all that stuff in, in subsequent uh, C++ fundamental videos. But here's our switch, cool. So now we have logic based on our attack type. So what do we want to do with this? Well, we can take our attack montage and we can say, hey, if it's a fist, do this. If it's a kick, do something else. <clears throat> so not bad, but now I'm having duplicate calls um, in between these cases and I'm, I'm kind of reproducing all of this logic. And I don't want to do that. I'm a programmer. I want to be lazy. I want to reuse stuff. So let's just undo that real quick. And rather than um, copying this whole logic, let's just create a variable. So f name, and we're gonna say, this is our um, attack row. And it's just null for now. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say our attack row is <clears throat> equal to f name text punch. And for a kick, it's going to be equal to kick. And then down here, when we actually make reference to this attack row, <clears throat> we can just pass it in. Cool. So what else can we do? So we have our logic around, um, oops, actually, we don't need this bracket. Um, we've got this logic around our um, switches. We've got the logic that will bring back the correct um, animation montage based on the input. And then we can flip between the sections using all of this logic. We don't need to rewrite any of this junk. So the only thing we did is we changed the, um, actually, you know what? Let's just call this an attack row key instead. Or better yet, let's just call it a row key. You want to be as sort of contextually appropriate with your variable naming as, as you possibly can because um, I'm not adding in a whole plethora of comments here, but I'll annotate it later. So when other developers are looking at your work, you know, they can very easily traverse your, your code. So we got a row key, we got this stuff that's going to pull it out of the montage. Let's go back to the engine now, or sorry, the editor, and let's open our player attack montage table, our data table. So what do we have here? We have our one row that represents the melee attacks and we called it punch one. So let's rename that just to punch. And then we're gonna add a secondary row and we're gonna call this kick. And guess what? It's gonna take in a kick montage. It also has three sections and this is attacks primarily focused on kicking. Save. And there we are we have two different now attack montages tied to all of our notifies, tied to all of our events, and now tied to our attack logic. So let's recompile and see what happens. 
Okay, so we're all recompiled. <clears throat> Let's take a look at our game. So our punches are still working. I mean, those collision boxes we'll fix in a second, but our punches are working. If I hit, you know, I get that snapback we did in the um, um, Anim Instance video. So all that's working. Now, if we right click, what happens? Oh, interesting. So our attack fires, our notifications fire, but no animation. What is happening? So let's start doing a little bit of troubleshooting. Where do our animations occur? Well, our animations occur um, when this guy in our code, this play and montage is fired. And we know this part of it is working because we're able to just do punch and that goes through. And then kick comes in and it also kind of goes through because our notifications get triggered by this. We're just not seeing them. Well, why are we not seeing them? So let's do some troubleshooting. Let's go up to our, um, our kick montage and see what's going on here. Well, we have this slot guy and if you recall in our previous videos, the slot was used to determine the position of this animation relative to the overall scope of the animation. So if we pull up our punch, it's set to the upper body. So we're only animating from his waist up and we're leaving the feet um, as our regular sort of animation um, blend space. But the kick is a full body exercise. So how do we go about taking over the uh, blend spaces to ensure that we can play back this full thing? And this is the, the new bit that we're gonna look at. So let's look at our animation blueprint. And the animation blueprint is under mannequin animations and third person and MBP. Okay, so what's happening in here? Um, we have a little bit of logic that says get the pawn or the player character, get its movement component, falling side is air. Okay, we don't care about that. We got velocity for speed. Okay, we don't care about that. What else do we have? We got our animation graph. And if we zoom out, we added this bit of logic that allowed us to play back um, the blended poses. So, because our um, our player, our um, kick animations tied to that player are coming in basically through the default group, well, we need to figure out how to deal with that. And what's interesting about the animation graph, let me just uh, minimize some of this stuff on the left here so we get a little bit more room. What's interesting about the animation graph is if you right click um, and you look for something like bool, you got blend poses by boolean. So that says do some logic based on a true or false condition. Now our true or false condition should be something that allows us to determine within our player um, as to what animation we want to play back. So we have a few um, hints that will tell us how to actually get um, some sort of Boolean parameter into this, um, into this node. So you'll notice on the left-hand side, we've got these variables, is an error and speed. And when we were looking at the event graph, we saw, well, they're coming in, we trace the lines down, oh, get pawn owner. Get pawn owner lets us get at the punch kick character. So if we can get at our character class, we can then expose some sort of property from it set it into a animation blueprint variable, and then call it in here to make um, distinctions between the various animation poses. Cool, let's get that settled. So let's go back into Visual Studio and <clears throat> let's go find our is animation blended property. So it's being set, cool. Let's now add in a new method to actually expose that value to our blueprint. and. You don't always want to <clears throat> do all your work through just variables. Sometimes you want to use functions because you want to abstract a lot of logic um, away from the color of that. Um, so this is a good practice to basically say, hey, let's create some getters. Um, void get is animation 
blended. And this is going to return a boolean that tells us if we need to branch our animation blueprint blend uh, paths. And this is a boolean. Cool. So let's get this guy implemented. Go back to our CPP file, and I'm going to do it right above punch attack. We're going to create this getter. Get is animation blended. And all it does, sorry, it's not a void, it's a bool, is it simply returns is animation blended. Cool. One thing, though, um, I forgot to include here, is this is a method we want to expose to the blueprint. So you always want to decorate it with the U function macro, and then we have a bunch of different sort of um, parameters we can pass in, but we're going to look for just blueprint callable. And we're actually going to give it a category of animation. All right, let's uh, recompile this and see what happens. Okay, so we're recompiled. Let's open up the editor. <clears throat> oh, and I closed the uh, blueprint um, graph by accident. So let's go back to our event graph. And now from our punch kick character, we should be able to say is, oh, there it is, is animation blended. Cool. So we have our value. And now we need to set it to a local variable within the blueprint, the animation blueprint. So is animation blended. It's also a Boolean. Let's just compile it and make sure that it's always turned on by default. <clears throat> so we drag this guy over and we want to call the setter. And there we go. So, <clears throat> excuse me, every time we um, run our animations, it's going to pull in this value, this getter, from our player character. It's going to set this animation blueprint variable, and then we can use it in the animation graph. Um, I'm just going to take this guy here, and we're just going to reroute it through that. Cool. Let's go to the animation graph. <clears throat> so now that we have this value, we can drag it over into this boolean. So that's going to control the back and forth. And then we can say, okay, if the animation is blended, then take the output of this. I'm just going to rearrange this just a little bit. So take the output of this blend and pop it into our fi final animation pose. But if we are not blending, then we need to do something else. So we take our cache locomotion pose. And then you'll notice this guy here, We the slot. So if we look for slot, oh, we've got our default slot, which is where our kicks are currently set. So we're basically gonna, going to say, if we're blending, combine the default, which is the, um, the blend spaces of our movement sections, blended with the punching mechanics, and if we're not blended, then replace the whole animation with this. And this ends up being our kick. So let's try this out. Oh, sorry, wrong window. Let's try this out. Punch, punch, kick. Multiple kick. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. But we have some problems still, like this one. We don't want movement when we're kicking because you see we don't have any sort of kicks that also articulate the movement of the, of the player. They are standing animations. Even this one, it moves the player a little bit to the right. So we're going to worry about that later. We're not going to worry about uh, moving the character with our animations just yet. And the other problem that you may have noticed is those boxes are freaking huge and they don't attach to our feet. So we're gonna have to fix that. So let's shrink down our boxes. And to do so, we're gonna open up the um, third player 
character blueprint. And we're going to load up our left melee collision box and our right melee collision box. And you see they're, they're quite big. Oops. We're just going to shrink them down. So I'm just going to change these movement bits down a little bit. There we go. And now we're going to take one of these colliders. Oops. Let's change the camera speed a bit. There we go. We got the colliders. We're going to change this box so it's just a little bit smaller and encompasses his hand. And I know that we did this before, but like I said, when you change the variable names, um, the engine resets all this stuff. So that collider looks pretty good. Um, and now let's take its scale, copy from left to right. And let's recompile, start it up. What does it look like? Much better. All right, cool. So um, we don't have colliders on our feet. Let's fix that too. And as I was saying earlier, what we're gonna have to do is add a new socket to our character mesh under the mannequin skeleton. So you can see there's our fist left and fist right collision sockets. And now let's add in some feet collision sockets. So I'm gonna go with the ball right as our parent. And I'm gonna say add socket. I'm gonna change this to foot R collision. And then we're gonna go down to our ball left and add a new socket. Foot L collision. Cool. So we have our sockets, which are placed strategically kind of at the at the toe. So that's pretty good. But now we need to add, attach those collision boxes to the feet. And how do we do that? Well, if you guys recall, back in our previous tutorial, we went ahead and in begin play, in, in begin play added in these components um, to our player mesh. Now, we don't need to do this anymore in begin play. We can do this now when the attacks occur. So I'm going to take all of this junk and I'm going to go down to our attack input method down here and we're going to make some determinations um, in our switch. So if I paste all this logic in, we can now say, okay, for punch, attach the colliders to our fist sockets, but for our kicks, let's attach the colliders to our feet. So foot L and foot R. Cool. Let's recompile and see what this looks like. Okay, our project's recompiled. Let's close some of these things down. Let's get rid of that. Uh, this seems to be working now. We can get rid of that. We don't care about this. All right, let's see what's happening. So there are colliders on our, on our, on our uh, hands. Now check this out. They went down to our feet. So when we kick now, ho ho, through the magic of inheritance, and object-oriented programming, you have turned this little collider mechanic into what is potentially going to become a weapon system. We have now logic that we were able to reuse and create in basically less than, you know, 45 minutes, an additional attack with new animations, reusing our colliders, and we can just keep growing on these mechanics to add in more and more complex systems. But, but so far, so good. Now, we still have one more problem, which is while we're running and we're punching, that looks all okay. And then when we're running and we're kicking, that looks terrible. So let's fix that. Okay, so to fix that, we're going to open up Visual Studio. And we're going to introduce a new property 
um, called bool is keyboard enabled. And the reason I'm saying keyboard enabled and not mouse or input enabled is I actually want to leave the mouse in place because right now the mouse allows us just to kind of pan the camera around. It's not doing any, any harm. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. So let's just worry about the keyboard. And to do this, we're going to use this variable and we're also going to have to um, have some sort of method that allows us to um, turn this on or off depending on, on the situation. So I'm also going to introduce a new function up here new function and I'm going to make a blue print callable as well and it's going to say bool set is keyboard enabled and it's going to take in a boolean enabled okay so this is going to be controls um, if the keyboard responds, responds to user input. All right, cool. So let's realize this um, method now in our CPP file. And again, I'll do it right under this getter. So it's void a punch kick character, set as keyboard enabled, takes in the Boolean. And the Boolean is simply going to say is keyboard enabled, enabled. Cool, so we have a way of turning this on and off and we have a storage type. Now let's start reading it in. So when do we want to disable the keyboard? Well, we can do it here, you know, at the initial punches, but that's kind of not where a lot of our logic lives. Uh, we can do it in attack input. That seems like a good spot. So every time a punch is thrown, we want to say, is keyboard enabled? True, just in case. Now, when a kick is thrown, let's say is keyboard enabled equals false. All right, so that gets us um, into the punch and kick states, but <clears throat> now we need to actually leverage these parameters somewhere and also um, make sure we turn things off when the animation is complete. So first things first, let's start with <clears throat> our movement input. So we've got move forward and move right. And we've got this conditional that says, hey, do I have a controller? And is the value not equal to zero? So it, does that mean the character is moving? So we can also say end is keyboard enabled. So controller, is he moving? And is the keyboard enabled? Then do some stuff, move him to the right. And same thing for move forward. Is keyboard enabled? So this is gonna stop the input from affecting our animations. Cool, almost there. Now we need to turn off um, or turn the keyboard back on when the animation is complete. So you know that we have these guys here that <clears throat> within our attack start notify system, we have the begin and the end. And just to help revisualize that, let's go back to our kick montage. And what that means is down here at the end of this um, execution, we're going to enable um, the keyboard back. But if we do it down here, right? If we, if we do it in this spot, very quickly, you'll realize that we're moving um, even though you know his foot is still kind of, kind of floaty. So what we wanna do is we're just gonna drag this over kind of towards the end. I'm gonna drag this over towards the end. And we're also gonna drag this over towards the end. Now, I know the clever um, students amongst the group are saying, but you've also tied your collision notifiers to this notify state. So if you drag it over, then they're gonna be available longer. And when you know his fist and his foot are down, the collider is still occurring. And clever you are, we're gonna change that later. Not, not, not in this tutorial, but, but later on. So let's not worry about that too much because we're only really going to be um, dealing with this kind of for the kicks. So let's save that. And then let's go back to our code. And in here at the end, we also want to say player set keyboard enabled equals true. And we could have done it in attack end, but as I was saying earlier, we're going to be leveraging attack end to handle our, handle our colliders. 
So we're going to add in a different notification state in future tutorials where we're going to rip this guy out. So just for sake of this exercise, we'll leave it in here. Let's recompile and see what happens. All right, so we had one little exception. I'm just going to quickly correct that and recompile. I left the signature of the method in the header as boolean for set as keyboard enabled rather than void. All right, guys, let's take a look. So there's our kick. And I mean, you can't see it, but I am pressing the move buttons and he's not actually moving. But when we punch, all of that stuff works. When we kick, ah, uh, hmm. What's happening here? Well, what's interesting about this is we are basically saying, hey, when I'm moving and I stop and I hit kick and I try to move again, it's not going to go. But if I get into this weird little state where I just happen to trigger the movement and the animation before anything happens, it, it still lets me fly around. And we can kind of quickly correct this one too. Let's go back to Visual Studio and I'll show you how. So if you guys recall, our attack start notify state had actually three methods that we were dealing with. There was the begin, the end, and the tick, which we're missing from here. So let's bring it in. And what the tick allows us to do is control um, the operation. And while IntelliSense is running, let me look at the montage. What it allows us to do is track this state. So when attack start notify goes, that green sort of um, teal colored um, line is where all of that action happens. So within here, we can also say and disable keyboard movement during this activity, which is what's causing, um, which is what's causing our animation to um, continue as we were previously moving around. Okay, so uh, 10,000 years later, IntelliSense finally found the definition and we can steal this notify tick signature. Again, if you'd like more information about notify states and anim notifies, go check out the other videos as well as the blog postings that have just a whole pile of detail, detail around all this stuff. But we're gonna go into our notify state and we're going to say override for notify tick. And then in the actual implementation, we're also going to say you attack state notify, notify tick, and it brings in all of that good stuff. And there we go. So there's a tick definition. And all we're going to do in here is basically all of this stuff minus the log message again, because I don't want to be spamming the screen every, you know, every tick. Um, but we don't want to do an attack end, and what we're going to do is we're going to say if attack type equals e attack type kick, then we want to set the keyboard input to false. But what is attack type? Hmm. Well, it's a property on our player, but Again, it's a private, right, current attack. So we need to A, set it, because we're not setting it yet, and then expose it through another function. So let's go back here, and we're going to take all of this good stuff, and we're going to return a E attack type, and we're going to say get current attack, no method signature, or uh, sorry, no input parameter, and this is going to be uh, do, 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 returns the current attack the player is performing. Cool. So where do we set the current attack? Well, we have again our attack input method that has all of this stuff already coming in. So we can say current attack equals oops attack type. So now every time we fire a new attack, we're going to get this reference. And then through our get attack type method, which we don't have created yet, get attack, sorry, get current attack, 
we're going to return our current attack. Cool. So we have a getter. Um, it's bringing back that information. We're setting it up based on the attack type. Now we need to do just a little bit of additional logic within our notify to get at this guy. And we simply say player get current attack equals kick. So if we're kicking and that whole chunk of the animation is flying, then we want to disable any input. Let's recompile and try it out. All right, guys, so we're recompiled and now let's take a look at our game. So punches, all of that still works, sounds work, hitting works, kick standing still, kick moving stops us. Uh-oh. So we're almost there. Just so, so close. So we get this little slide. And again, I'm sure you can notice that that little slide is because our kick attack, kick attack montage uh, notification sections, they don't expand the full duration of the animation, right? We start here, but we actually begin the disabling process around here. So, what can we do? Well, we can take the slider and go all the way to the left. And then we can take this other slider and go all the way to the beginning of the section. And we can take this other one and go all the way over here. We then restart our game. Punches still work. But now kicks no longer allow us to slide. Whether I catch it mid-animation or sort of as I'm moving around, it, it won't go. Pretty cool. There we go. This is all working really, really well. Now, there's one more issue. Well, issue, feature, hard to say. When I jump, I can also kick. And it's okay for some of these kick animations, um, but not all of them, right? Like. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to do a spin kick if you have nothing to stand on and spin around. And we're going to leave this one for now. Um, we're going to expand on this later on when we talk about um, alternate jumps and you know all kinds of other player character features. But I'm impressed with almost no effort, just a little bit of reorganizing of the code and a little bit of you know sort of critical thinking. We were able to create this new set of attacks disable movement and generally we're forming this pretty badass little uh, mannequin guy let's kick this box around let's see how it goes bam second box there it goes and we can punch it and, and we can have a little bit of fun now so the whole idea of this exercise was to allow you guys to just revisit all the stuff we learned play with it experiment and show you how easy all of this stuff can be just with a little bit of reorganization. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope to see you guys next time when we look at expanding this player character and add in a whole bunch of other exciting features. Thanks again.